seem to be exciting for opening night. Yeah, if you're a hoops junkie, you want the season to be all year long. But obviously in the summer, you get time off. And that opening night, you're looking forward. You're looking forward to see the new players, the new team. And you. in day one, everybody feels they can win a championship. It's just later on in the year, reality starts to set in. Yeah, well said. Now let's take a look at the Bulls' opening lineup. Don and Levine, their backcourt. Here it's edge at the power forward with Lopez in the middle. And it's Wade in at the three, the small forward. Lopez outside. Back to Levine. He feeds it to Dunn. It's stolen by Valanciunas. And here we go with DeRozan running it up the middle. Misses from close range. You know what? He tried to lay it in at the point of attack. Just too much defensive pressure on that play. Miritich's shot is off. Just great at getting after it defensively, forcing guys into tough shots. Yeah, to be successful, you've got to protect the paint. He rises to that challenge. Wade outside. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. And there's the pass to Miritich. Four on the clock. Over Ibaka. And that one comes up a bit short. And this is a guy that can get you stops. Aggressive on the defensive end. Also doing a good job of tracking the ball, contesting the mid-range jumper as well. Miritich's shot is off. Toronto, they've gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. DeRozan connects on the 17-footer. DeRozan's got his first points in this one. You know, he tracks a lot of defensive attention, and that enables Lowry to create open looks for his teammates. There does come a time when you haven't made anything all quarter long. Pass the rock. You know, a little off his game this quarter. Still trying to find a rhythm, though. For Chicago, they've gone 0 of 4, missing their first four field goals here. And out of bounds as the Raptors gain possession. That is just a careless turnover. You've got to be smarter in those exchanges. The Raptors have gone 2 of 5 here, making 40% so far to start out the game. Valanciunas with a screen on Wade. DeRozan dishes to Valanciunas. Good. And it's DeRozan picking up the assists. Great heads-up look there from DeRozan to get his teammate an easy basket. And, and really, DeMar DeRozan is a master at what he calls body hunting. That, that ability to just kind of draw a foul. I think he and James Harden actually are the guys that have really kind of set the tone for how to create those opportunities to get to the line. The Raptors have gone 50% from the field, hitting three of six since the opening tip. Lowry kicks to DeRozan. Alan Junis sets a screen for DeRozan. Alan Junis with a screen on Wade. Over Wade, and the basket by DeRozan. DeRozan's got his second basket of the night. And DeMar DeRozan always, Greg, among the league leaders in free throw attempts. And when you look at him, 6'7", 220 pounds with tremendous athleticism, he has got all the tools. Beyond you know, that attack mentality, he's a savvy basketball player. Those little shot fakes, his footwork helped this guy live at the line. Hey, Steve, when Meritich came over to the NBA, he had an immediate impact and showed a lot of promise to grow. Unfortunately, he has been stagnant since his strong rookie season. Any idea why? Uh, Miritich is just a bit of what you see, what you get kind of player. Not terribly consistent game to game or shot to shot. Can stretch the floor, but doesn't give you much else. That one misses for Miritich. And when Miritich first came over to the NBA, he made a big splash, showed that he can act as that stretch four and, and contribute. Unfortunately, he, he just hasn't evolved as a player since that rookie year. And stolen by Kyle Lowry. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And for Miritich, a lot of his lack, Greg, of progression as a player has come from inconsistency. And you can see it in his field goal percentage as well as when he plays. It needs to find more consistency in every facet of the game. But young enough, I think, to, to still make that happen.
shooting two. First one falls for. And Steve, in your playing days, you always struck that balance, I always thought, between calling your own number and creating for teammates. That's that's a real that's a real gift. It is. And I think the value of playing winning basketball, Kevin, is whatever play dictates making your teammates better or making the winning play. I think a lot of guys right now get caught up in stats. Whatever's the play to help your team win, that's the play that needs to be made. Well, sir. They have a unique offense for Toronto. Very low assists and very low turnovers. Not the kind of system we see from teams like Coda State, but the Raptors make it work for them. And the first time out of the game called for Chicago. And the Raptors may not get a lot of assists, but they do get a ton of so-called screen assists. Uh, Steve, great picks freeing their guards to do damage. Yes, pick and roll basketball at its finest. The question is, do they need to diversify a little bit? If you depend on one action, it makes it easier for teams to game plan for you in the playoffs. change here. Siakam's checked in. All right, a moment to check out the stats for Lowry. Coming off a terrific season. He put up about 22 points a game last season. Seven assists and four rebounds. And he's been putting up points with regularity. I mean, that's what they depend on, his killer instinct on offense. Well, and we've seen defenses try to adjust. But he has the intelligence along with the talent. Just finds new ways to beat him. DeRozan kicks to Siakam and another shot and the layup is up and in. Uh, I don't know if you can do it any better on both ends than they have tonight. It's early but they have taken full control of this game and the fans here they know it. And although Dwayne Wade very much an NBA veteran he is still a very high usage player. He's 35 years old last season and he was still putting up 16 shots a game. When you think about the longevity of Wade's career, it is impressive. He has adjusted his game to still be a factor on the floor as he's aged. You keep waiting for him not to be productive, but he still keeps beating father time. And that one misses. And, and you look at all the accomplishments, all the great moments from Wade's career. No doubt he is going to the hall as soon as he's eligible. One of the greatest two guards to ever play. Noguera is checked in for Toronto. And a change for the Bulls. Grant's checked in. And he can't hit the second. And it's shocking when you look at the numbers that Wade has had over the years. He never won an MVP award. Certainly, Greg played like an MVP in some of his seasons. But the rest of the accolades are there for D. Wade. Uh, all the trips to the All-Star game, the first team, all defense, the all-NBA teams. But most important to him and his legacy are the three NBA titles. Here's Portis, and they will get the basket here, folks, as they rule goaltending just barely too late and, and catches it on the way down. He's already in the air there, committed, so can't fault him for going for the block. Here's Toronto. They're on a 16-4 run. Lowry kicks to DeRozan. Nogueira gets a screen for DeRozan to the paint. And that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Bulls trail by 14. 
It's stolen by Lowry. DeRozan against Holiday. And the shot goes down. That's now eight points for DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on body. Count it. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Raptors leading by 14. Inside. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Lowry. And where the shot's been coming from tonight, here's a look broken down by paint, mid-range, and three-point shot attempt so far for the Raptors. And a shot they haven't been looking for very much is that corner three. And when they have, he's been quick to kind of close out and deny it, and they've had to get their points from elsewhere. Bulls trail by 14. That's the holiday. Wade on the wing. DeRozan defending. Wade kicks to Grant. Holiday with it. Howell on him. No, Gira with the steal. Now the Raptors moving it up. Here's Lowry. Good. And it's DeRozan picking up the assist. This is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. Wade against DeRozan. It's blocked. Four on three break. Siakam, good. Siakam's got his second bucket of the night. And really focused on establishing dominance down low. And guys, it's working. They have played physical. They have owned the paint. And they have built up a decent lead here in the first. A shot by Lowry. Wide open. Hits it from three-point range. Lowry's got five now. Lowry gets more and more comfortable launching threes the longer he's in the league. And guys, he's not an easy man to stop when he's got the rim in his sights. Never has been, never will be. He is a determined finisher. And so it's DeMar DeRozan making highlights for Toronto. He was a true standout at the offensive end, both with his scoring and his passing. Back to the action after this word. And Serge Ibaka, known for his shooting ability now, he talked about the confidence his teammates and his coach instilled in him. He trusts you. Every time he passes the ball, when you don't shoot, he screams you, shoot ball. Then next time what? You will shoot. And if you miss, you say, yeah, good shot. You know, and your coaches in the practice talking to your teammates. Man, when Serge is open, give him the ball. He will make that shot. If you wonder how much difference a coach can make for a player, there it is. Huh? You, you heard it in Serge's voice, too. That confidence has already been planted in him. That, that voice telling him, shoot the ball, it is now in his own head. He, he's going to be just fine. And welcome back. It's been all one-sided so far through the first quarter as our second quarter gets underway. And a very convincing performance from the Raptors so far. And boy, I tell you, it didn't take them long to find their rhythm. Strong offense through one. Yeah, their scoring's been on point. They've got the early lead. Always feels good when that happens. And now brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset our lineups. So the Bulls five right now. Portis is out there with Dwayne Wade. Then there's Markinen. Then there's Grant. And it's Holiday in at the two. And so it's going to be a three-second violation out there on the defense. The Raptors shooting their third free throw shot of the game. And when you look at their numbers from a season ago, 80% as a unit, that's something you'll be happy with. One shot, gentlemen. Free throw drops for Kyle Lowry. And it seems these players are getting more and more athletic, Steve. So much of that is modern conditioning, core strength, off-season workouts, things that probably didn't happen when you were playing, but just because of science have developed now. Uh, what, 
did you do that helped you out the most and, and maybe some things you wish you had done? Well, you look at my body, Kevin. Yes, it didn't help me. I was this skinny rail guy. We had a bench press and we squatted. But guys right now are having more talking about core strength, yoga, Pilates. I mean, they're doing so much that is totally different. I wish I would have been a guy who spent more time on his body versus my game because it means a lot to be able to have that core strength. But I didn't think beach muscles, you really needed it to play the game of basketball. Guys right now, it's their entire body and it's also their entire way they recover from the games of basketball. And I think that's why I wish I'd have worked on better. That word you just said, recover, the recovery process, I think is even more scientifically advanced now than it was when you played, correct? Yes. Kevin, example for me, I just iced my knees. Guys now have hyperbaric chambers that they use, mm. and a lot of guys have them in their homes. Here's Lopez. Bounces high off the rim and drops. Raptors leading by 21. Kicks to Pirtle. Second quarter of action, about a minute and a half played. Feeds it to Lowry. Just five on the clock. Here's Ibaka. And that's out of bounds. Toronto will retain possession. Taking a look now at some numbers for Dunn. Last season's performance for him put up about three points per game, two assists, and two rebounds. And for him, it's all about getting better each time he takes the floor. Also, he needs to avoid distractions on the court and off the court. Just focus on the job at hand. A wide open look here for Ibaka. That falls. Nice feed that time from Kyle Lowry. Lowry's got four assists now tonight. Time called here. The Bulls decide to talk it over. This, of course, their first chance to take a look at this year's Toronto squad. Yeah, and these teams pretty familiar with one another. They'll face off four times this year. These teams have played each other plenty of times over the years. All of these games should be exciting, tight-fisted affairs. And for so long, the Bulls really were synonymous with the best defensive teams in the league. But as a team, they've started to slip the last few years. It's something that has been lost while this team kind of retools for the future. Valentunis, who's checked in for the Raptors. And now, here's the 2K leaderboard with the teams that last season scored the most second-chance points in the NBA. Number one, the Bulls. Yeah, that was a huge factor for them a season ago, their ability to attack the offensive glass and then convert those into second-chance buckets. I mean, no one did it better. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. The dish to Powell. Lopez over to help. Lowry kicks to Miles. Alan Junis with a screen on Miritich. Here's Miles. No good off the front iron. The Bulls have gotten only one of their first four shots in the second quarter to drop. Here's Levine, and Levine throws it down. Up in the rafters, Zach Levine climbs the ladder as quickly as anyone. Toronto leading by 22. Powell with it. Outside Lowry. A picture perfect screenplay and the jumper's good. Lowry's got eight. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. An unforced error. I'm not sure what was he thinking. And for those of you just joining us in the second quarter with about three minutes gone by. It's Powell on the wing. And the Raptors hit again from deep. Great ball movement there. The Bulls have gone two of five from the field here in the second quarter, shooting 40%. Releases from 15, and the rejection by Lowry. And 
the wide open shot from Miles. The shot's good on the assist by Lowry. Lowry's got six assists now in the game. And for the Bulls, they're shooting poorly, just 35% so far. Well over a decade in the NBA for C.J. Miles, taken straight out of high school by the Jazz back in 2005. And he's just now entering his 30s. A good floor spacer and solid defender at the two or three spot. D with very little pressure on their perimeter shooters. Three of the last five baskets they've allowed have been from beyond. To the right side. Here's Miritich. And again, Chicago. No good. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. No surprise in a battle of wheels down low. The big man comes away with it. Lopez against Lowry. Owl for three. The putback. And stay with the play, Valanciunas. And Kevin, they've dialed up their activity this quarter. We're seeing them convert a lot of those second chance opportunities. Done with it. Lowry picks him up. Looking to end the run, and there's the nice layup by Dunn. There's just no way you are stopping Dunn when he's that close to the bucket. A, a skilled finisher and amazing athlete. And the dunk by Valanciunas. Dropping dimes all night. He, he's been completely locked in. Unselfish basketball. That'll make you very popular amongst your teammates. Dunn misses. Awfully hard to get back into the game when one of your key shooters is this ice cold and has been all quarter. Ibaka right side. And Ibaka slams it in. And you see, Serge, he's still somewhat mechanical on the drive, but it can be effective. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Levine can't hit. You can't ask for a higher percentage look than the one that he got. I think he lost his concentration. And Zach Levine gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. And the Raptors with some changes. Pascal Siakam comes in for Serge Ibaka. And DeMar DeRozan subbed in for Norman Powell. Markinen, he's checked in for the Bulls. Pass to Siakam. And the rebound goes to Lopez. The Bulls shooting in the second quarter has been pretty embarrassing, just 27%. Here's Dunn. And the rejection by Valanciunas. You see the length of Valanciunas on display with that block. Just went up and got it. And out of bounds as the Bulls gain possession. Both teams will make substitutions. Guys, we've seen a lot of turnovers in this one. Yeah, focus, focus, focus. Just make the simple play. Holiday gets the bucket. And you see the coach saying, no, no, no. Then yes, yes, yes. Four seconds left. Basket good. And that's now 10 points for DeMar DeRozan. One of his strong points, DeMar DeRozan is so dependable when he gets to the mid-range, he knocks those down often. And so it's the Toronto Raptors going to the break, holding an enormous 36-point lead. Their defense has been terrific in this game. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much. Jonas, you guys got off to a strong start. How important was it to set the tone early? You know, we came out with a different energy. We said it's enough to struggle from the start. You know, we got to focus and play good starts. That is where it all starts. Thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. All right, Dave, thank you. And time now for the halftime break with the third quarter soon to follow right here on 2K Sports. And now, the 2K Sports and halftime And hello again. Show. We have an exhilarated home crowd joining us for our halftime report. I'm Ernie Johnson alongside Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaq. It's Toronto with the advantage at the half. They are completely in control of the game, leading by a massive amount. Kenny, some perspective, please. Well, it has been an electric performance. These guys were firing on all cylinders. They came out aggressive going after those rebounds, and they were piling it up. I think they wanted to send a message with their physicality, and they're going to be nearly impossible to stop if they're playing that way. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Chicago? 
They were not running an efficient offense. The shot selection has to improve. It's as simple as that. Too many guys working as individuals, not as a team. They need to work as a unit, Ernie. Move the ball. That's it for halftime. Glad you could join us as now we send you back to the action for the start of the third quarter. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. Kyle Lowry has just been sensational. And in that first half, something we don't see a lot of from him, the ability to make everyone around him better. You know what? It hasn't been his role, but he has the skill set to do it. Maybe this is a new wrinkle to his game. We're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. And Chicago shooting about 33%. Not happy with their play on that end. And the Raptors looking for a way to break through the East. Smitty, how do they get past the Cavaliers? I don't know, Kevin. That's the question. As long as LeBron James stands in their way, it won't be easy. DeMar DeRozan said it himself. The key will be finding another star. In today's NBA, you need at least three stars to win. DeRozan and Miles are the wings. Nabaka is the four, and Valanciunas in the middle. And it's Lowry in at the point guard. They're the group for Dwayne Casey starting the second half. He's feeling it. And the Raptors tack on two more. Once he's dialed in, helping to dictate the flow of this game. And here are the Bulls now. They host the Spurs after this one. That game will be a quick pit stop before hitting the road again. This could get even more out of hand if they continue to put up points. Wow, Kevin, what a performance we are seeing. Here's Ibaka. They get the rebound. Back to Lowry. Left side, Ibaka. From deep, that's in. Coming off an assist from Lowry. Lowry's got his eighth assist in the game. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Wade kicks to Miritic. Back to Wade. Shoots the three. Kick out to Levine. To the right side. Beyond the arc. Done shots. Good. Dunn's got eight. What about the concentration of Dunn nailing the shot right in the D's face? And the dunk by Valanciunas. This is a guy who knows how to orchestrate an offense. Terrific lead pass. Bulls have gone two of three from the field to start the second half. Levine kicks to Dunn. And it's Wade in the corner. Fires the three. Alan Junis grabs the board. The Raptors have gotten four of their first five second half shots to fall. 80% since the break. DeRozan passes to Lowry. And here's Miles outside. And the Raptors hit again from deep. And every season we have the MVP conversation, Smitty. When you look forward over the next, well, let's say, five to ten years, who are the guys, the players you think will be regulars in that conversation? I think the guys, um, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, some other guys, I think Kawhi Leonard, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Davis. And as long as he plays, Kevin, LeBron James will always be in that conversation. It doesn't look like the end is coming in the next five, five or ten years. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Well, Kevin, it may not be the era of the center in the NBA, but Jonas Valanciunas has something to say about that. He said, I try to make sure they don't forget about centers. I'll keep reminding them. The league is full of guys that can do different things, but I still think you need a center that can rebound the ball and score in the low post. I agree. Kevin? Well, the centers are still important, David. Good to see Valanciunas making his presence felt in the paint. Pirtle, he is checked in for the Raptors. Norman Powell comes in for C.J. Miles. Chicago also making some changes. Arkanen comes in for Robin Lopez. And it's Portis in for Miritich. And again, Toronto no luck. 
Not a big threat from out there. You see why the defense backed off a little. Back to Levine. Some nice ball movement by the Bulls. Portis kicks to Dunn. Lock at six. Or three. Levine. Rebound by the Raptors. It's Powell on the wing. He's got five. Takes the 13-footer. That one off the back iron and out. I can tell you right now, the coach loved everything about that shot except the result. He's been scoreless for a while now. They're still trailing here. They might want to move to some other options offensively. Now, here's Dunn while recovering. DeRozan against Wade. Tries to snap the cold streak. The shot, no good. You want to talk about ugly? This team is losing, partly because he hasn't drained a shot all night. Now, one thing about DeMar DeRozan, he lives in the gym. I mean, people talk about that he's always working on his game. They talk about him in the offseason being in the lab with all type of different type of trainers. And the results, they speak for themselves. The Raptors have been solid at the line so far. Four for four. The first one falls. You know, you think about the way the Bulls ended their season last year, snuck into the playoffs as the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference. And in fact, uh, Smitty, they jumped off to a 2 0 series lead. But then, then the reverse sweep happens to them. Yeah, it did. Hard to say how deep they could have gone if they stayed healthy. But they almost put those Cinderella slippers on as an eighth seed. Losing Rondo, it hurt. This team just never looked the same in that series. Holiday against DeRozan. And Holiday kicks to Grant. Pass to Markinen. Here's Portis. And Holiday has it in the corner. Off the mark there with the three point shot. It's three on three on the fast break. The wide open look here for DeRozan. Releases from the wing and drills it. DeRozan's got four points now in the quarter. DeMar DeRozan is so good when he has space to get out and get his legs moving on a break. Stolen by Markinen. Now Grant. He hasn't yet put up any points in this one. And a chance here to take a look at the shooting chart for Lowry. And the way they have been shooting from deep, boy, that's been impressive. Talk about making the most of your opportunities. This game would look very different if they weren't dialed in from deep. As it stands, however, they are in control, and the defense has to adjust to how they defend beyond the arc. Here's Powell. He's got five. He dishes it to Nogueira. Nogueira gets a screen for DeRozan. Powell with it, and Holiday picks him up defensively. Nogueira passes to Powell. Here's Siakam, down to five on the shot clock. The Raptors need to get a shot off. For three, offensive rebound, Hurdle. Lays it up and banks it in. Pirtle's got five points so far. Got to be on the lookout for Pirtle crashing the glass, using his body to wreck the defense on the boards. Levine kicks to Portis to end the run. That's good, and it's Levine with the assist. Levine's got three assists tonight. Yeah, it's such a sweet three-point stroke there, and it can really open things up inside because as good as he shoots it, it forces the opposing bigs to have to step out on the perimeter. The versatility of DeMar DeRozan can finish with power or finesse in the painted area. The three quarters of play all in the books, and this one all but over already. It's the Raptors running away with it. We'll be back shortly live from the Air Canada Center in downtown Toronto. And from the most recent huddle, let's listen in on head coach Dwayne Casey. But men, we got to get down and get engaged at the other end. All right, be precise, send the ball to the screen, come across the screen. I focus on the defense. 
Let's go. Here you are, Dwayne Casey, asking for more precision on offense and more attention to detail on defense. Yeah, you carry out your assignments on both ends. Do the little things that ultimately make a big difference in the outcome of a game. And we're getting underway here in the fourth quarter. The scoreboard tells the story in this matchup, but we'll see how much things change up here. So the Bulls five right now. They've got Markinen, and it's Felicio in at the five, roaming the paint. Here's Nogueira. Missile on the play. Bucket's good. He'll go to the line. Great hustle on display, and you know what? It's paying off with those second chance points. On an OB, he's checked in for Pirtle. On the free throw, no good. And Nogueira, the seven-footer out of Brazil, very long, Steve, and athletic. He is a leaper. That makes him a threat around the rim on both ends. But on the defensive end, he has to learn not to bite on those pump fakes. Here's Ananobi. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. It's on Lowry Markinen. Well, Steve, with the rise of NBA message boards and increased coverage from beat writers, NBA players have plenty of opportunity to read up on opinions of what people are saying about that player. Is this something that is impossible to avoid? And do some players read fan opinions about themselves? Are they reading these, these critiques? Yeah, I, I think they are. Some players read in too much. Fans have a voice, but you don't have to read the good or the bad. But, uh, but going back to the beat writers, I think a lot of times a beat writer is one of those guys that you see every day and you're looking to challenge him when he writes something bad and also you want to pat him on the back when he writes something good. But I think you got to look at the beat writer and understand he's doing his job. You got to kind of separate that. But a lot of times when there's a beat writer interact with a player, a lot of times it's bad, especially if the beat writer has written something negative toward the player. I wish they could separate those guys and also the players can separate the beat writers from fans. You know, the Raptors have the advantage of continuity. There's a trust and an understanding they share helps them win a lot of games. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. Grant up top. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And we can talk about the continuity and maturity of this Raptors team. Is there a flip side to that, Steve? Does that limit their upside? Well, Kevin, is interesting. This front office has brought in some nice young pieces. I wouldn't write off their upside. They can improve if those younger guys make some strides. Oh, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. He's off on the first. And across the NBA, we've seen players taking a vocal stance on various social issues. Uh, Smitty, you think that's pretty important? Very important. And I think this generation has done it better than my generation. Obviously, speaking out, but yes, they're using their social media tools to come out and talk about important issues. And the one thing you want, you just want to bring light to these issues. And hopefully, a lot of people, the more light you bring, the more solutions, I think, will come about. Well said. The Bulls have had one of the largest and strongest fan bases in the NBA for years, having the Jordan era Bulls helped, but they have always been a beloved team in the city of Chicago. Yeah, you see the devotion from their fans at their games, and the numbers back it up. They've had the best fan attendance every year since 2010, and they've been in the top five since as long as I can remember, and that's long. Here's McDaniels. Here's the pass to Ananope. Here's Van Vliet. And the Raptors miss again. Well, the Bulls shooting around 29% from the floor. Tough night for them all around on the offensive end. Fast break Toronto. Here's McDaniels. It's blocked. 
And how about marketing using his size and reach on defense? Great timing in terms of being able to get up and block shots. And that one's good. Zipser. And you have to appreciate the aggression. Nice work inside. Van Vliet passes to Siakam. Here's Nogira. And he drops it in from the low post. It's fine to extend your defense to try and create turnovers, but, but guys have to help each other. That's been a problem for them all game. Teamwork is something you just can't turn on and off. Zipser's shot is off. In Toronto, they've gone just 33% from the field in the fourth quarter so far. They are two of six. So the wing on the left, wide open look. He can't get it to go. And the Bulls going the other way now. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. And plenty of contact on the shot. So two free throws coming up. And Toronto called for the foul. And for many years, the Chicago Bulls were viewed as a model franchise. Always were competitive and in the hunt for a title. But this current version two just shots. can't escape turmoil from within. No good on the free throw. And the Bulls finally committing, Greg, to a full rebuild this last offseason. Yeah, and, and trading Butler was the start of it. I mean, they, they got some young players to build around and a pick. And it won't be an easy road ahead, but one they felt they needed to make. Catching up on the changes for Chicago. Miritich has checked in for Markkanen. And David Nwaba is subbed in for Justin Holliday. And no good on the second free throw, so he goes 0 for 2 there. And the initial rules for the NBA include that six personal fouls is the magic number before you're done for the game. It's been this way since, you know, who can remember? But, but do you think six is the right number, Steve, for fouls? Or would you like to see them raise or lower? I definitely wouldn't want to see them raise it. I think seven would be too much. Uh, maybe if they lower that's a possibility. But right now, I think it's six. Maybe five, or maybe you can experiment during some preseason games or in summer league. But I think six should be the maximum. Van Vliet kicks to Siakam. Pass to Van Vliet. Pass to Ananobi. Puts up a three. And the Raptors miss again. Chicago's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. And Miritich kicks to Felicio. Back to Miritich. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. Here's Van Vliet. Passes to Siakam. Nick Daniels kicks to Siakam. Dishes it to McDaniels. Gets the three-pointer to fall. And this is his shot. You give him that much space, you're asking for trouble. And the problem is you're already way behind. Obviously, your closeouts are ineffective. You're in trouble. Van Vliet kicks to Siakam. And the pass to Van Vliet. Here's Ananobi. And he overshot that one, missing. Bulls have gone one of five from the field here in the fourth. A lot of misses, just the one make. They need this one. No good from Grant. Toronto's gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Raptors. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And it'll go down as their first official win of the new year. And they'll take the win tonight, Great. setting the tone in the first matchup of this four-game season series. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for Kyle Lowry. He just looked like an orchestrator out there. His teammates kept running to the open spot, and he found them time and time again. Denzel Valentine, he's checked in for Chicago. Here's Ananobi. Misses from short range. 
you can see he just rushed that a little bit. Lost the focus, I think. Here's Mwaba and the rebound paying off as they pick up two on the second chance bucket right there. Now that's how you pick up second chance points. Stay active and be ready as soon as the shot goes up. And it's out of bounds. The Raptors able to retain possession here. Yeah, tremendous hustle just to get a hand on that one. Reads the play, quick reaction, almost comes up with that steal. We've got a nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Pass to Siakam. The feed to McDaniels. And here is Wright. Shot clock at six. A floater. He takes it up and lays it in. And they've earned this one. Showing an ability to, to dominate in front of their home crowd. You know, you feel on top of the world when it happens as a player. Just the relationship you have with the fans. And putting in the work on the boards, and it's paying off with chances like that. And, Gia, he does put in the work. You're mm -hmm. right. It's why he's on the finishing end of one putback slam after another. He just never gives up on any play, any shot. He's always battling in the paint. He's one of the best at that position. And so Toronto takes this one, but by a big margin. They won this game going away. They were the better basketball team by far tonight. And you got to commend this sort of dominance, particularly here at home. It's a great feeling when you play almost a perfect game and to have that crowd be so pumped up. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave, 